most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. So today we're going to talk, cover how to sit pain-free in an office when you have back pain or sciatica. Now, we're going to show you the correct way to sit and, and the things, the adjustments when you, when you, want, you want to make. Mm -hmm. But ideally, you're going to avoid sitting. Sitting, you know, when you sit with the spine, even when you sit in perfect posture, it's still more stress on the back than it would be to stand. It's a lot easier to keep in better posture right. with, with standing too. You certainly don't want to do this where you slouch. Can you see? Yeah, Brad, if you want to show that from the side. And that's the position that a lot of us end up after time when we start to fatigue. So the alternative would be is if you could get a standing desk. And I realize some of you may not be able to afford one, but it when I hurt my back back in 1985, Brad, I, I actually did not sit at all. I did all my notes and stuff and, and stood by a counter and and I just didn't stand at all during the day. Sit. So I didn't sit all day. Here, <laughs> thank you for correcting me. All right, so Brad's going to show you some options here um, that we use from FlexiSpot, actually. Some nice desks that they right. make. So if you have a desk and you want to put a desk on top of a desk that allows you to stand. Uh, this is a nice sample here. Uh, so this, I just have a, a lever, on a the lever right. over there and it'll go up so high. Now, if you see I'm standing here, uh, the, actually the screen is too low for me because you want the screen, when you look level with your eyes, it should be about in the middle of the screen. So if that's the situation, you know, I, I'm going to adjust by raising the screen like that. And that's much better. Um, the other option. And that's the one I have actually at home is this, this one? one. Yeah, yep. it works really well. They've tested it. And uh, I don't remember how many thousand of times they 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 right. tested it for quality control. And it's, it, it's commercial. I've duty. had mine for two years and it's or maybe three years now. And it's really great. You're going to show the other one, Brad? Though? If you don't have this now, the advantage of they actually make the whole desk. So let's imagine that this is gone. I'm not going to lift it to take it off for the video, but you can uh, lift the whole desk up. And, and this is the one that you have, Brad. Correct? Right. Yep. This is and the one. This is the one my wife uses. Right. And, and there you go. And I see her quite often. She, I, she's very much motivated to stand, even when you don't have back pain. It helps prevent back pain too. So one thing that's nice is, you know, if you have back pain, you're not going to stand at your computer eight hours all day long either. Um, you you want to stand, but you may want to take some time. And what I like is actually to get a stool, so that you can. Sit so you're not sitting low. This is much less pressure pressure on your back than sitting this low. But you may want to sit like this for ten minutes and then go back to standing. So most of the time you're standing, but you get to take a little bit of a break too, or get up and walk around is even probably the better option. So it's almost like halfway between sitting and halfway between standing. So it's a lot easier on your back. Right. We right. used to recommend this, Brad, on in factories. Remember? Yep. That to, oh yeah. Take some relief. People working on the feet. line. So, all right, so next thing, when you, you're going to set up your workstation here, and this is assuming that you're going to have the computer and the chair and the mouse and the screen and maybe some documents. So we usually recommend going in this order. You start with the chair first. Mm -hmm. So with the chair, a number of uh, modifications that can be made here. The first thing is you're going to want to make sure it's high enough. Right. So where is my lever here? So if I put this here, you can see my knee is higher than my hip. Right. And that's going to cause me to round out a little bit. You definitely want to have this probably level at the, at, at worse, yep. you know, uh, so I'm going to bring it up as high as she goes here. And even if it's a little bit lower, you actually like that way, Brad, don't you? No, I like a little, I like my hips a little bit higher. Oh, you do. Oh, yeah. Right. right. right that's right. what I meant. The knee is lower than the hips. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I thought. And it, it makes it easier to keep your back straight than keep the arch in your back. Exactly. So you want to also have a firm back. You don't want to have one of those backs that kind of, this Reef. one actually is set right now to be, uh, this can set firm. Yeah. But yeah, if it's like this, you're going to lean back like this and look what I'm doing. I'm slouching. Right. My head's coming forward. 
So you want to have a good firm back. That says a firm back, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, th this one's firm. And this is actually my chair. Um, my seat has a slight tilt forward, which I really like. It feels good on my back. Uh, there is some controversy about that. I, I think... Um, it works for you. It works great for yeah. me. Um, it's a little low right now. I bring it up to here. And I don't lean back. I mean, when I sure. sit, I work like this. I may stretch back and use it for an occasional stretch, but but I don't sit at my computer leaning back. I I sit like this, and it helps me monitor, maintain good posture. And that's often what I do, Brad, too. Sure, I, especially if if I'm up and down somewhat. If yeah. I'm, so maybe I'm like ten minutes. I definitely keep. You know, I think if you're there for hours, it's really difficult to to stay in good position. But right, yeah. You know. and then I I may use a, a support. Yeah, and we're going to talk about the supports. Okay. The other thing is you want to make sure your feet are firmly on the ground. Right. For someone who's a little bit shorter, uh, Brad. <laughs> yeah, I I had um, somebody. Annette had that. Oh, Annette had Annette, that. She, okay. Her, actually, uh, her husband made uh, <laughs> a, a wooden platform. platform because when she was high enough, so the screen lined up and she could line up with the keyboard, her feet literally would not touch the ground. Uh, so she and then what happens is you start getting cut off pressure underneath your thigh and circulation and, yeah, problems. Yeah, yeah, it's just not comfortable. Right. It's good to have a flat footrest right. and a big one because then you can move your feet around and, and you're not confined to one small there area. There you go. So there you go. Um, let's talk about back supports, Brad. So um, if you've never used a back support, you know, we're trying to encourage you to keep the arch in your low back, especially with sciatica. Um, you may start with just a, a roll towel to determine the size. Uh, for someone who's a slight build, who would be me, uh, I don't need as thick a thicker one because you can see there's not as much gap here mm -hmm. as there would be someone who has kind of a large buttock area. Sure. And they have a large gap there. They might need a bigger support. So I put this about by the belt line or maybe a little lower. It should be comfortable. It should feel right. That's You're going to know when it's in the right yeah, spot. Yeah, it's going to make things feel good. It's good support. You'll know. Yeah. So uh, once you determine kind of what size you need, then you can look on the internet. We got some links below for the McKenzie supports. And you can find ones that will fit you. So, right. you, so you want to show some of the variety there, Brad. With Bob... You didn't mention, I don't know if, I think maybe I should, is the towel roll, you can just roll it to different diameters. Sure. Uh, and then we got tape on this one. You can use rubber bands would probably be good to start with because you don't have the, the adhesive and to deal get, with. Yeah, you can get a thicker, plusher towel if yeah. you want more of a roll. Um, and you'll know, again, what, what works for you. We're looking for comfort. We're not, it, it's not something you should have to work into. Right. It should feel good right away. Exactly. Uh, so these are just three examples of McKenzie supports. Uh, this one's a round one. It's a little bit softer, the density, and they'll have note on that on the description. Um, this one is called a D shape because it's flat on one side and round here. And this one's a little more dense. That would be for a larger person. Yeah, this one's not bad for me. And uh, this one, I can tell you already, is going to be too much. Yeah. Look at how I'm rounding out way yeah. too much. You know, you're arching. And then this one, obviously thinner. Uh, that might be for a, a smaller person. And that's air-filled. Yep. So it can has some adjustment to it. There are so many different varieties. Show that one, Brad, that you like. Um, Th this is what I use. You use in the car. Correct. I use in the car. I use one on my lawnmower, and I have one in my recliner. Oh, you do? Yeah. Wow. So he's got all the bases covered. Now, this is one I do not like in the car, but I actually, I could absolutely use this one in an office, Brad, because sure. it pushes me forward. Yep. And so I, it, I'm i in that upright position, but sure. still getting support. Yeah. That, so. That's a nice one. It's uh, That one's made out of memory foam. I like it. You sink yeah, into the, it. Yeah. Uh, Kubota. Yep. I guess uh, we probably should put a link for that too, Mike. And all so. of these have straps so that you can strap it around the chair so it doesn't fall forward or whatnot. All right. Brad started mentioning the keyboard here. Oh, yeah. So with the keyboard, when you come up to the keyboard, I'm just going to roll right over here, Brad, because it looks like it's about set right for me. Sure. You want to have the arms upright. The upper arm is upright. And this one's almost level or below level. Right. Bit. So if I go here, it's a little bit below level. This is about where I want to be for the keyboard. Sure. Same with the mouse. The mouse should be, you know, right off to the right. If you're right-handed, right off to the left. Some people, if they're really mouse dominant, they could even put it in the middle. Sure. You know, if they're, yep. they're doing it. Now, for some of you, what you might actually, Brad, do you mind handing me that lap tray? Yeah. I'm just going to, just example. 
if the keyboard yeah show it that's a good point brad if the keyboard was up here it's too high and yeah. if you cannot and your chair's already adjusted right you can't lower the desk um, yeah, and what's going to happen is you're going to start uh, rounding out too when right. you're like this and plus it's really bad on your arms but the so, wrist is not yeah, good for carpal right, tunnel right. there's just it's just too high so yeah brad excellent uh decision here to raise this up because now i can show as an alternative you can actually use like a lap tray like this mm -hmm. I, I used to use one like this. I got kind of away from it, Brad, because the one I desk I'm using now fits me pretty well. Yep. But I used to just sit like this. The keyboard yep. right in your lap. Right in my yep. lap. Um, you can actually put it in your lap without a tray. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, you can give that a try too. Sure. So. And actually right now, the way I raise it, the keyboard was too high, but now the, yeah, the, the screen, screen is, is pretty good. It's pretty good for me. So, And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. The screen, as Brad mentioned before, you know, if you look at where your eyes are are focused, they should hit about the middle of the screen. What yeah. we see is so common. If, if you take a level line from the eyeballs over, it should be middle of the screen, maybe a little bit higher, sure. but uh, definitely most of the time screens are too low. Absolutely. And what that that's probably the biggest problem we see in people, Brad, is that they are hunched over mm. like that to see the screen. Yeah. I also had a big problem with my bifocals oh sure so even when I, i'd have the screen up but i'd be going like this so you could see through the yeah bifocal so, part? and I, I was getting headaches yeah so i ended up purchasing a pair of reading glasses just for a, you know actually my my optometrist knew exactly what i need he said sure. you need one about 40 inches away he said mm -hmm. that'll and i use that all the time i just keep it right by my desk and i just sure. flip those on and i no longer get any headaches from it so um and again, if the screens, we're using the laptop here. If you do use a laptop and it's low, I mean, you can use anything. We're just using using the box. You can use stack up books. You can buy plastic exactly. uh, elevation uh, stacks that are made for that. Get the screen up where it needs to be and then get the keyboard, the keyboard down where it needs to be. Right, yeah, that's it. Can be a challenge. Now, this is the big thing because a lot of people have laptops, and mm -hmm. what do they do? They put the laptop down in their lap, All right? And they're down like this. Yes, that's just terrible on their back. If they put it up here, you know where it's supposed to be, then their arms are up. So you really do need to get the separate keyboard. Yep, get the you're... get the wireless keyboard. They're not very expensive. No, and it just. Then you can set up in good posture, and you don't need to worry about your neck, back, or, or arms right. and, and the problems that they could uh, result in. Right. So uh, the other thing, Brad, is it, it would be the same as if you just have a, a regular desktop. You know, your, your desktop screen would also be up like this. Oh, right. Yeah. Typically, it, they're going to – they're actually – it's a little, it's actually it's a little high. A little bit high there. Yeah. Um, you and, know, and, usually, and down here. Usually they're going to be bigger than this. I mean, they're, sure. They're a lot right. larger. Now, than. and some of those desktops, if it's a good one, you can raise and lower the screen on the back. There's actually, have you seen those? Yeah, yep. and they tilt too, which yep. makes it easier. Yep. On so, you, so some people may, may not even be aware that their computer screen has that option on the back. Adjust. It's kind of covered. Um, the final thing is documents. Uh, if you do a lot of, Typing from documents. Oh yes. You actually, um, I used to have this uh, set these up for the secretaries at the, where I used to work, Brad. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of times, especially if you're fairly tall, the, you got room be for the document between the screen and between the keyboard. So it's all in line. You yeah, don't it's have all to line, and you're not going like you're not going like this back and forth constantly. Right. And right. which is really hard on your neck. So it's just a a great, another little hint. Maybe not so much to do with your back, but you can just move your eyes down as yep. opposed to moving your head all right. the way down like that. If it's flat, what are you doing? You're going like this. Right. Yeah, that's the big thing. So you know, they have document holders that clip, little yep. arm and it hangs over here, and, and that's okay too. Those that, aren't good. That's yeah. a lot better than sitting it flat. So that that's yeah, because that's option. the same thing. You can just move your eyes over to see it as opposed to moving your head over. Sure. So. Yep. I think we covered it all, Brad. Do you want to mention anything else? But again, the idea is that you want to avoid sitting as much as possible with most types of back pain. If you have, obviously, sp spondylolisthesis, 
Say, go ahead and say, Brad. Spondylolis desis. Spondylolis dosis desis. Um, it, <laughs> it's you, a mouthful. You, you're going to probably feel okay sitting. Um, spinal stenosis, you're going to probably feel okay sitting. But with sciatica and some just general run-of-the-mill back pain, it's not going to feel that great. Sure. So I just did want to mention uh, these deaths. You know, they're particularly in the workplace. A lot of times if you ask your employer, uh, they will, you know, purchase it for you. They're not cheap, but for a workplace – if it's a matter of you having a back problem versus staying and working and, and, and being productive, uh, it's not a big deal. We had uh, an employee that uh, actually, a person, she had back pain. She just got one of these zests, and it took care of it. Yeah, she it's stood, amazing that, uh, how much that can play a role in your life right. when you sit a lot. And these are, it really come down, Brad. I sure. mean, to the point, they're, they're fairly reasonable now, yep. you know, if you don't want to. Uh, flip for the big, big one, the electric one. Exactly. Um, and these work out great. They're, they, they've really been tested. Right. And, and there's a great. link below. Yep. yep. Link below. All so. right. All right. Thanks for watching.